Hello friends, oh, we are back here with the DCS hardware and its applications and here in this particular video we shall be determining what are the components which go in for DCS hardware and how do we select the proper hardware for the proper application. As we know in any kind of hardware that is related to the controls we have a controller card and along with the controller card you can have input cards the input cards can be digital ones or they can take the analog ones like 4 to 20 milliampere they can be directly interfaced with the sensors like thermocouples or rtds and so on and similarly we have output cards which again can be digital or they can be uh, in the form of analog output giving you 4 to 20 milliampere along with that what normally goes in any kind of hardware is the power supply module, a communication card for the various modules to communicate amongst themselves, the required cables and we have a controller with the input output card. This entire thing looks like this rack where all these control cards they fit in the racks and this is how the DCS looks like in general. Prince. We have to have some kind of man machine interface and this is normally in the form of a monitor or nowadays we are getting a large scale a large sized video screens which are mostly you know LCDs or LED based things and then we have the regular printers and this is what is a, a, an individual person can you know work upon and this is what we have it when the plant is very large and we have operators the operators can look at these screens and work on in in the parallel mode the operators workstation as you call it it has several facilities like first of all we have alarm monitoring that is anything going bad anywhere anything going bad anywhere the level is going out of range the pressure is going out of range the temperature is going out of range the flow is not under control and so on and so forth you will get an alarm and the operator will go to that particular section or that particular page as he can scroll through the whole plant let us say is divided into 30 sections or 30 pages so these are all displayed in the form of graphic display we will be showing one of the pages in the subsequent slides and these are also called mimic diagrams because they mimic the behavior of the plant and what we does what what we do over there is that we normally have let us say three operators they mutually decide that if we have 30 pages page number 1 to 10 will be taken care by the first operator page number 11 to 20 will be taken care by the second operator and the page number 21 to 30 will be taken care by the third operator so that's what they mutually decide and they keep on shifting that is today i'm going to control 1 to 10 tomorrow i'm going to control 11 to 20 and the day after i'm going to control 21 to 30 so that i remain in touch with the whole entire plant i don't just uh, focus my attention and don't want to forget about the rest of the plants in between also when the three operators are working one wants to relieve himself for let us say 10 minutes 15 minutes washroom break or something of that sort they want he wants to eat green salads to keep himself fresh so uh, what they decide is that while one operator has taken a five minute or 10 minute break they again mutually decide that okay in this duration i will be controlling page number one to 15 you control page number 16 to 30 and the third operator will be just you know enjoying a little break in between so that's how the things go uh, the way we have pilot and co-pilot in a plane we have in this case operator number one operator number two and operator number three they normally go hand in hand and we also have a kind of you know uh, unsaid rule that these three operators will be from three different backgrounds like one can be mechanical engineer one can be electrical engineer and one has to be instrumentation engineer or he has to be trained in the instrumentation field as such so that if at all there is any conflict 
if at all there is any uh, inquiry, it can be handled by one of these experts. You want to actually see the trend. Trend means the history, how the trend is for the whole day, how the trend is for the whole week, how the trend is for the whole, uh, you can say, month or even one year. It, it's all recorded and it can be displayed in this trend display. You have operator guidance display. You have system and diagnostic display. You can go in for any of the displays at any of the times. You can control the entire process. You can see the bar charts. You can see the sequential display and also you can have the fault analysis display. So all these operators are actually trained to work on these displays and these three operators, they can control the entire entire plant which was earlier controlled by let us say more than 30 operators so now the things have become much much easier much easier to control and there is no lack of understanding all the three uh, controllers the, the operators they are sitting next to each other talking to each other in a, a very relaxed and playful manner so you don't have to do anything uh, which causes confusion or lack of communication the eye contact is there of course uh, these days even the social distancing can be maintained but uh, as such as we see they all have to work hand in hand all these three streams all these three experts they work hand in hand thanks to the technology what you call it as distributed control systems friends as i just promised that display mimic this is the mimic diagram of a burner this is the burner of the boiler and you can see some fuel is entering from here this is port number two this is port number three as you can see this is port number four this is port number one and all these ports are they are just spitting in some fuel which is getting mixed and burnt over here it can the, the this fuel can be uh, powdered coal or initially it can be uh, oil or in some cases it can be even gas but this is the case when you have let us say coal so this coal is pulverized means it's it's ground into a very fine powder before it's injected into the boilers and this is what it looks like the whole the whole thing you have you know some secondary fan a air fan secondary fan b and so on and so forth so all the fans all the boilers uh, all the boiler controls, all the walls. This is, for example, PA. Although the print is too fine for you to read, I'm going to read it for you. This is PA. This means primary air fan. And this is, again, primary air fan, another one. This is secondary air fan A. This is another one, secondary fan B. So you can switch on or switch off or change the speed. And then you have different pumps which are to be controlled. And all these pumps are you know shown over here everything which is physically present in the plant is shown in the mimic you have uh, let us say some something is going in this uh, hopper and it's coming down and we have a conveyor belt and this conveyor belt is carrying the uh, feed for the coal it's going over there and then it's getting pulverized over here and finally it is blown with the air and and the powdered coal it is fired in the boiler so all these things can actually be seen. You can control each and every component in this page. And dear friends, this is just one page. Similarly, you have page number two, page number three, page number four. And the entire plant is divided into these kind of pages or in this kind of display or you can say mimic diagrams. This is another view of the display mimic diagram. So again, it's of the boiler and I'm not going to go into the details of all these. It's just to give you an idea, a fair idea, uh, a complete idea as such in its, it, in its uh, holistic manner, how the different mimics look like. This is what I call about the trending. Let us say uh, th this is something like we have a boiler flow output and input, let us say the uh, blue one uh, and the red one they represents the inflow and the outflow this is how the inflow and outflow were actually matching but at some stage of time uh, or, or you can say the pressures or whatsoever the level whatsoever it can be 
but in this case let's say it's it's a flow and the flow goes down for some reason there's a breakdown and it remains in the lower position and then it again increases it can be pressure it can be level it can be anything i'm just giving you that this is how the trends are maintained for one two three four n number of variables they can be seen and with respect to the time stamp it's getting the time stamp uh, what happened at what minute or even to the final details of what second it happened all that can be recorded all that can be stored in the form of a history module all that can be retrieved from this history module at any moment of time even after one year as such of the recording and you can see this can be analyzed for at any juncture of time thereafter we can have log of the summaries the reports the events what happened at what time the boiler tripped or there was a startup or whatsoever so we had a shift log you have a daily log you have a performance log you have a maintenance log you can calculate the efficiency of the boiler and you can plan the maintenance and you can have an overall summary of the things everything gets recorded because you have a very good history module and the whole data is acquired it is consolidated it is recorded it is saved it is then communicated for the subsequent operations the reports they look like this as you can see you have for example what we call it as auxiliary power auxiliary power if i tell you that when you are generating power you need some power to uh, actually run the generation plant so that power which goes in for uh, the running of our generation plant that is called auxiliary power so what auxiliary power was consumed by uh, let us say uh, cold water pumps and so on and so forth the various mills and the various uh, fans uh, and so on and so forth so all these powers in kilowatts or kilowatt hours if you call it in terms of energy that can be seen at a click of the mouse it's all available for your analysis we can have auto control loops making use of dcs we can have coordinated control let us say we have a uh, total air control what what is the temperature control of a superheater or the reheater these are the components of the boiler what is the mill out temperature control mill means where you are actually grinding the coal what is the hot well heater derator level so all those levels drum levels etc can be controlled at the click of the button by the operators as we had seen we can even control the furnace draft draft means the amount of air which is going in uh, at at a very controlled manner this was about the boiler control in the boiler control we have boiler management system we have how do we control the secondary air how do we control the auxiliary pressure how do we control the suit blower control as such and so on and so forth there are a number of things you might not be able to understand what is suit blower but uh, uh, you can just understand that uh, as the smoke is going out uh, we don't want the ash particles which have been left in the smoke are going up in the atmosphere and they pollute the air as such so it's collected with various bag filters or different kind of filters or precipitators and so on and so forth so whatever is collected inside the bag is the fine fine suit that is the smoke particles uh, they are not allowed to go to the air they are collected and it needs to be blown away the bags which get filled with the suit they need to be actually emptied and that suit can be later on dumped or the suit can be used in different things like uh, for it's also called fly ash and you know this fly ash can be used for uh, in cultivation it actually contains a lot of silica or it can be used for making bricks and so on and so forth so all these things can be controlled actually making use of dcs in power plant we have turbine and turbine is the one which converts high pressure steam to relatively lower pressure steam and this change in pressure actually is the uh, energy and that energy is used to run the turbine and that turbine is connected to the alternator 
and that's how electricity is produced so you have a turbine you have to have a turbine governing system you have to have a turbine protection system we don't want too many changes uh, or abrupt changes in the speed or the pressure or the flow of the steam going to the turbine or getting out of the turbine so you have to have automatic turbine run up systems you have turbine stress controllers just we get stressed we get under a lot of pressure turbine can also get under stress and we need to control that you have some bypass systems low pressure high pressure and so on and so forth and we have the various auxiliary monitoring so that that everything can be controlled making use of distributed control systems as i told you that at the end of the year or in between we need to calculate the things and as an auditor also uh, when we go we want to calculate the various efficiencies we want to know the performance how the boiler has performed how the turbine has performed how the feed heaters have performed how the condenser has performed and so on and so forth so the unit heat rate can be calculated unit heat rate means how many kilo calories have gone in a boiler to produce 1 kilo watt hour 1 kilo watt hour is the unit of energy how many kilo calories have gone in the lesser the better this is called unit heat rate and the way we want to calculate unit heat rate we also compare it what was the unit heat heat rate yesterday yesterday year last year it was uh, x this year it is y ideally this y should be less than x because we want to improve the performance and that is what is the energy auditing and energy management all about so how will we improve only we can uh, see that improvement will happen if we are able to calculate we are able to determine we are able to see where the energy is getting wasted at each and every point in a system so for that we need to have good amount of data and this data is collected by none other than distributed control systems so if you see a typical 500 megawatt unit of a thermal plant the number of inputs will be something like 13000 it's actually nearing 14000 inputs nearly 7000 outputs you may require eight workstations you may require five large video screens to control a typical 500 megawatt and that's how the enormous that's how the humongous data uh, it needs to be handled it needs to be stored it needs to be processed and this can be done only with the help of distributed control systems Hello friends oh, we are back here with the DCS hardware and its applications and here in this particular video we shall be determining what are the components which go in for DCS hardware and how do we select the proper hardware for the proper application as we know in any kind of hardware that is related to the controls we have a controller card and along with the controller card you can have input cards the input cards can be digital ones or they can take the analog ones like 4 to 20 milliampere they can be directly interfaced with the sensors like thermocouples or rtds and so on and similarly we have output cards which again can be digital or they can be uh, in the form of analog output giving you 4 to 20